Hey everyone, and welcome to the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. And you're in the right place to develop your ninja skills with Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and more. In this movie, we're going to create this 15 point engraved star. This tutorial was requested by Michael, one of the channel subscribers. Hey, Michael. And so we're going to look at how we can build that out. I'm going to start out with a brand new document and here it doesn't really matter what you use just make sure that a line to pixel grid is not turned on because it won't work properly uh, the way we're doing it here you might find another route uh, to achieving it but this way uh, you need that to be off most definitely I'm going to choose a 1920 by 1080 preset just here and then what I'm going to do is turn on my rulers. Now in CC 2018 with nothing selected I can do everything I'll be doing here in this section of the properties panel but you'll find them also inside of the view menu especially if you're in an earlier version. So I'm just going to click to turn on the rulers and I need two guides here one horizontally and one vertically so I'll drag down horizontal guide and then I'm going to hold down the alt or option key and drag down a vertical guide from the same top ruler. I can now turn my rulers off as I don't need them anymore and I'm going to click to unlock the guides and then with my selection tool drag across them both to select them. Now if you've got the align panel open or you're using the properties inspector that's just fine. I've got the control strip back along the top here in my own uh, little workspace but I'm going to change the alignment to align to artboard and then choose center horizontally and center vertically just to get those exactly where I need them. I'll return that back to align to selection in case I need it later on and then click away from that and then lock my guides because they've done their job and they're in place now. Next we're going to need the line tool so if you hit the backslash key on your keyboard come down to the intersection of the guides and then click and drag upwards hold down shift as you do so that will keep it locked to that angle and then release the mouse button and then release the shift key in that order. And what we're going to need to do now is just give the stroke a color so we'll just choose black just here and dial this up to seven points. I found this works best when it's an odd number for some uh, strange reason and click on the stroke options here. Make sure that the flush cap is chosen for this at the moment. Once we've done that, what we need to do now is to create some scaled copies and we're going to use a transform effect to do that. So go to the effect menu. Of course, the object needs to remain selected as well. Go to the effect menu, down to distort and transform and then choose transform. And what we're going to do here, first of all, from the bottom up is we're going to check preview so we can see what we're doing. We're going to set the registration point to bottom center. We're going to dial in four copies. We're going to dial in the angle of 2.79. Now it should be for 120 points, three degrees, but I've messed around with this a little bit and I've found that this is, for me at least, the best angle to do this at. And then finally, we need to dial in some vertical scaling. I find that sort of around 95 to 90% works really, really well. In fact, I'm going to leave mine at 95. And you can see there we've got the number of copies we need at the right angle. Hit OK. And that will create us that with an effect, which we now need to expand. So go to the object menu and choose expand appearance like so. It will create us a group and we actually need to ungroup that. So shift command G, shift control G on Windows. You might need to do it a couple of times. And what you're watching out for is either at the top of the properties panel or on the control strip for it to change to path. That's exactly what we need. Tap V now to get your selection tool. Click away to deselect everything and then just select those four lines that were created by the transform effect. And we're going to make a copy flipped over the other side. So tap O to get the reflect tool. And we're going to use the anchor point of the center line as the registration point. So hold down Alt or Option and click just there. And then to create your copy, make sure it's set to vertical like so. To create your copy, just hold down Alt or Option and hit Return rather than clicking Copy because that's like old school and too slow. Perfect. 
Now we've done that, tap V again to get your selection tool and click on the last stroke on the right hand side here. Now we're going to change the colour of this because it will give us a marker that we can track going round. Really it's only the remaining strokes that we need to copy but this one will make it easy to set up the rotation around. You'll see why in a second. So just change the stroke colour there like so. So if I change that, I'm going to change it to red. I think it will be easy to see. Or actually let's go for orange. It's not so harsh. There you are. <laughs> Perfect. Now we've done that, we need to select all of those things and group them command G or control G and then back up to the effect menu back to distort and transform and choose transform although you can also do that from the top of the effect menu as well make sure that the scale is set to 100% in both directions turn on preview bottom center registration point again this time we're going to dial in 14 copies and the angle is going to be set to 24 degrees. If you hit the tab key, you'll see how that's now repeating around like so. That orange marker is doing a good job of showing us where that rotation's working. If I hit OK just now, we can zoom in on that. Now it's not exactly on the top. If you wanted to mess around with the rotation angle and do some really small decimal numbers to get that to align perfectly, then of course you could, but I'm not going to here. I think that's good enough. I don't think many people would notice. So I'll zoom back out and now we're going to expand that appearance. That's really important. So object, expand appearance. And again, it creates us a group. I'm just going to ungroup this again just a couple of times and then get the direct selection tool. You can tap A to get that very quickly and then just click on the orange stroke. Now you'll know you've got the right one because it will show you it in the properties panel or possibly also in the control strip. I'm going to go to the select menu and choose same stroke color. And so it will pick up all of those orange strokes. And if you remember, they were completely redundant. So we can just delete those like so. And there we are. We've got our 15 pointed star. Now, if you wanted to round the caps of these off, now would be a good time to do that. So if we select all of those things, go to the stroke options and choose a round cap at the top there. There you go. That's those all nicely capped off. And then we need to outline those paths. So go to the object menu, down to path and choose outline stroke. And you'll see that I've actually attached my own shortcut to this, which is easy to do. And you'll find that here on the channel as well, how to do that. So now those are all actually filled shapes and I'm going to unite them using the Pathfinder. So if I click there like so, that's it. They become one united shape. And now we need to draw an ellipse. So we're going to get the ellipse tool. You can tap L on your keyboard to get to that quickly as well. Hold down Alt or Option and Shift together and drag outwards from the center until you've got the outer diameter that you're happy with. Release at that point. I'm going to change the color of this just to make it easier for you to see. There we go. If we go for a nice sort of cokish uh, red there. Okay. And now I'm going to tap S while this is still selected to get the scale tool. Hit return. And this is about the best size for me, I think about 85% just there. And I'm going to create a copy. So hit copy or alt return to do that. If you weren't happy with that particular relationship, all you'd need to do is hit return again. And then you could just dial that up to get to whatever size you actually wanted to achieve there. And then just hit OK because you don't need another copy. Then while that circle is still selected, copy it to the clipboard. So command C, control C and then select both shapes. And again, with the Pathfinder, use the minus front option to punch those two things out like so. Select both the star shape and the circle, and again, minus front to punch that out. And then use Command F or Control F to use the paste in front command. And that puts it at exactly the same coordinates. All we need to do then is to remove the fill and add in a stroke. So if I'm going to use a black stroke, the same as the other thing, I'm actually going to align this one to the inside, just my own personal preference, and then dial it up 
to the weight you're happy with. There we go. About five points for me is working pretty well just there. Now, of course, you could change the color of any of these things right now if you wanted to. If you had an icon to go in the center, then of course you could choose that. I think in the example I showed at the beginning, I used this eagle from the Regal Vector Pack and dragged that in, but I'm not going to have that uh, in this particular example. So next, I'm going to add a new layer, Command L or Control L to do that, or click the icon at the bottom of the panel. I'm going to lock the first layer, which I'm also going to rename star just there. And this layer is going to be banner. So we're going to draw the banner scrolling across and I'm going to use the curvature pen tool to do this. So shift back tick is the quick way to pick that up. Although you could of course pick that up from the toolbox. It's just to the right here of the pen tool. So I'm going to start over on the left here below the guideline there. I'm just going to click. I'm going to move across towards the center. I'm just eyeballing this really clicking here. That's a good arc shape there. Clicking just there. So those sort of four points will get me the kind of shape I need. The great thing about this tool is you don't need to switch out to model any of these points. You can just do that while you're still working with the tool. You can even add more points if you need to change anything there as well. Really easy to use. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit the escape key just to stop the tool from operating at the moment. And I'm going to dial up the stroke quite a lot. So I'm just going to dial that up. I'm just scrolling over the top of this field here, getting to the weight that I'm happy with. That is pretty good, actually 115 points just there. Okay, and I'm just going to select that and copy it. I want that on the clipboard as well because we'll be using it in just a minute. But this one that's here, what we're going to do is outline that again. So path, outline stroke. Okay, that now gives us a filled shape. And let's zoom in on that for the next part. I'm just going to change the color here also just to make it easier uh, for you to see. I'm going to tap P to get my pen tool. I'm just going to add a couple of points on either edge like so. You'll know when to click because you'll see a small plus appear next to the cursor. Now, if you tap A, you can get the direct selection tool and pull those in a little bit like so on either end. You can eyeball this completely. You don't need to be too precise here, I don't think. And if you wanted to add a bit of a curve to these diagonals, you could always get the anchor point tool from the pen tool family here and click on these paths and just give those a little bit of a tweak in like so, just to make them a slightly more interesting uh, in terms of shape. I'm just gonna undo the one I did there. I wanted to go actually out the other way. There we go. Just to give that just a bit more animation there from is. And of course you go the opposite way on the other end here. Yeah, so you go inwards here and out here with this one, just to give the effect of that dimension. Perfect. Now we've got that, we're going to use the paste in front command again. So edit, paste in front or command F, control F. And we actually don't need this to have any visual attributes at all. So we can clear the stroke there completely. We've just got the line, that's all we need. I'm just gonna use my arrow keys here just to nudge that down. So the down arrow pushing that down like so. And then I'm going to tap T to get the pen tool and then just click on the path when I see the cursor with the wobbly line there. It looks like it's going to align to the path. Or if you wanted to, you could actually go and choose the type on a path tool there as well, directly if you're having trouble with that one. So what I'm going to do here now is, first of all, I'm gonna get hold of the selection tool and just move these lines like so. You'll get placeholder text if you're in uh, a current version or a, a more recent version of Illustrator. And these determine where the text can start and stop. So if I put that line just there and do this one on the side here, and I think also I'm going to align that to the center. So I think the special awards issue was the uh, text on the original example that Michael gave me like so. So I'll replicate that just here then select it and what I'll do is then choose a typeface for it. So I think I was using this one, Savoy Electroset Plane, and I'll just dial the size up for that. There we go. And that's it. Once we've got that, we're sorted. We've got our text. If you need to move the text up, you can click it and just use the arrow keys to move that up. 
into place like so add any other effects you want to the banner but there you go that's how you'd achieve that star and banner effect so for now we're done don't forget to subscribe to the channel reach out to me via twitter or my facebook page those details will be along in just a moment please do spread the word keep on watching and until next time see ya